George, does it ever upset you how it ended in the eyes of some of your colleagues, acrimoniously some would say, or surround it with controversy? I think there's a certain thing about living by the sword and dying by the sword, you know. I mean, if you think of me as a rugby commentator or as a radio commentator or a writer on newspapers, I tended, you know, to call a spade a spade in that sense. So therefore, you know, I paid a price for it. Do I regret it? I never regret it and still don't what I meant to say. <laughs> I, but I do regret how I said it. You know, words, if I, if I had, and, and the problem with live broadcasting, it's the most dangerous thing in the world, is countless people at that. If I had thought about it or, or whatever. But you meant well, at the end of the day, your words well, were I, out of concern. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't feel like defending myself because I don't feel I have to. But I'm a man with daughters, I'm a, daughter, a, father, a grandfather with granddaughters. I, I am concerned increasingly in this modern world. I was concerned that women were taking risks. And, and my point was to say, hold on here, you know, you, you, you've got to think before. And we all, we all do it, we all make mistakes. And I paid a price for it. But what I think is much more important, funny enough, than George Hook, what I think is much more important than George Hook, is we are seeing terror within the media. So every, like Kevin Myers is gone, George Hook is gone. So suddenly, you know, if I'm 35 years of age and I'm trying to make a career in the media, I'm going to say, well, I'm not going to say anything wrong, not so much wrong, but I'm not going to say anything controversial here because I might lose my job. Yeah, one thought crime and you're gone almost. Yeah, so what we're seeing is, we're seeing an increasing political correctness creep into radio, television, newspapers, and less and less critical comment. The following weekend after the crisis, a pal of mine said to me, look George, if I were you, I'd get out of town for the weekend, go away to a hotel because there'd be a bit of a frenzy, the Sunday papers and everything. So when I go home to the lovely Ingrid and I say, listen, we should get out of town for the weekend. And she says, yeah, I'm not going to be run out of my home, she says. We'll go to Super Value and we'll get groceries for the siege. So anyway, we get groceries for the siege. And that Saturday, they were in their hordes outside my front door, the media. And I was inside watching television and they they could see me watching television, so they knocked on my window, they knocked on my front door, they, they punched uh, messages through my letterbox, they sent me texts on my mobile phone. And, um, but they, they had no corroboration for any story. And like, they, they went, one of them went back, they went back 50 years on one occasion looking for a story, and then another one, they went back over 25 years in looking for a story, you know. 50 years ago, Hook did this, and so therefore he must be a bad guy. But none of it was true, and none of it had corroboration. So was I upset? Yeah, but like, I was more upset for my family than I was about me. Like, I'm, I'm big enough and ugly enough to take this, and I'm, you know, I worried about it now.